Brothers, welcome back. First week into World 5, and hopefully you're finding it as interesting and fun as I am. Didn't want to upload day one just because I knew there was going to be a thousand videos, and I just didn't want to throw my video onto the pile with the rest of them. And the stuff we're going to talk about, I wanted you to have kind of a background on it. You know, you played around with it now for about a week, so the stuff we're going to talk about is going to make a little bit more sense. But there's going to be a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. You got to just press record. All right, for starters, World 5 brought with us three new skills. One of the first ones I want to talk about is Divinity. So divinity is the act of, you know, giving some sort of offering to a god to try and appease it to get the god to join you. So I'm going to try it right here. So failed, right? What I just did was I used my offerings, 17, 1,750 of them, for a 1% chance to unlock the, the god, right? Now, once you unlock the god you're going to get the ability to link them to your characters, right, as such. So as you can see, I've unlocked five gods. I've got uh, my six right now that are in the lab, and I'm doing air quotes right now because they are technically in the lab, and they're technically, you know, on the Divinity Altar, so they're still getting me that experience. Then I've got three, all three of my archer-type characters. They all have the 30%. And then my main character, my Bubo, has the... Um, this is Praying Mantis. So we'll go through them in order that you unlock them. So the first one's gonna be the snake. And he's gonna give you a 30% AFK gain for all activities, right? Really good for archers, especially my bowmen, you know, either killing G mushrooms, killing the um the what are those called? The clams in World 4 for the Perler shells. They also give a passive bonus of accuracy and defense. So really good for those, you know, maybe if you have a lower character, accuracy and defense isn't too good. This might be one to put on there. And then blessing, right? So down here at the bottom, you got to read the uh, the tooltip. This is going to affect all characters. So at level 28, this is giving me a plus 56% divinity gain. So if you want to see that, you're going to come over into info. And you'll see between all of my characters, I'm going to get 744 divinity an hour are 744 offerings that's this number right here so really good one really good one great for archer classes and then let's come over to, <laughs> to probably everyone's favorite so arctus the bear so this character is always active within the lab mainframe however they will not gain any lab xp so if you do have you know a pretty solid lab already and you don't want to keep anybody else in the lab but you still want to be able to have a full lab which you do want to because there's a lot of benefits of it this is going to be the one to go with so whether or not you use five or use six you know if your lab bonuses are kind of small maybe seven this is the one that you're going to push for and this is going to be the second god that you unlock all right so let's come over to the one i have on my bubo so this is Navasect, the Praying Mantis. All kills count for two times more kills for opening portals and accumulating death note kills. So this is kind of good, right? You could toss this onto a character, uh, go use him to farm, you know, uh, death note kills. G Mushrooms could toss it onto a uh, Bowman. That'd be really good because Bowman's getting, you know, 100,000 to a million G Mushroom kills an hour. Really pump up that death note kills. So, passive bonus is just a flat percent total damage, which is really good, especially for a boobo, and we'll get it to later what my damage is looking like. And then, affects all characters, 50% scaled skill efficiency. Not too sure what this, what this is doing. I know it has to do with skill efficiency, I just don't understand the whole scaled portion of it, and I don't want to mislead you. So, I'm going to leave that there, I'm going to do a little bit more research myself on what the scaled skill efficiency is, and then, you know, maybe in a later on video we can discuss it. Then we have Harriet. This character produces three times more resources at the 3D printer. Works with the lab bonus, but won't affect the displayed printer amount. So passive bonus, 10.1% coins gain for all characters. Really good one right here. Just a passive, you know, income increase. And the best thing about it is if you look at the other gods, this requires gaming bits, which we're going to discuss in just a second. This one requires gaming bits as well. This one requires gold that you get from sailing. And then the one we're about to discuss, gaming bits. So if you are Mr. Moneybags and you have all kinds of money, um, you can just level this bad boy up. I've seen people who have maxed it already. I'm obviously not that rich. Uh, I just wasted all my money. I'm back down to 20 luster. But uh, yeah. And then the last one that I've unlocked is Gaharut. 
So being connected to the lab also counts as being present at the divinity altar, so you get gains for both. So this one I would think would be good if your lab is, you know, struggling, you're just starting World 4, you push through World 4 as fast as you could to get to World 5, so maybe the lab's not looking too hot. This way you can have the lab active and still be getting Divinity XP without, you know, losing either or. So really good. Passive bonus is just a 0.5% AFK gains for all characters. Nothing huge, but every little bit helps. Blessing, which affects all characters. Even at level 5, you're getting, you know, 20% sailing speed, which I think is quite huge. So really good one to push here. So that's going to wrap up Divinity. Um, hopefully, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's getting more and more expensive. Each god that you unlock, it does make the, you know, olive branch, the tithes, the meals. Um, a lot more expensive so you know I'm about to leave for Christmas uh, with the family so hopefully by the time we get back we're gonna have you know a pretty good amount of uh, offerings you know stockpile now I'm gonna hop to a different character to show you a new uh, I, I guess I don't even know what to call it a new style choice right so you start off as Kinesis Kinesis not great right one divinity one XP per hour uh, you level up to level 5, you unlock Chakra, which is uh, 2 Divinity, 2 XP per hour. And then at level 10, you're going to get 4 Divinity and 1 XP per hour. So this one's really good. This is the characters. All the characters getting 115 are currently on focus. If you wanted to get more experience, I would shift into Chakra. Um, so that's why I'm getting, you know, just over 700 an hour. So switch back to Pots and Pots. And I think we're going to wrap it up there for Divinity. And then we're going to come on down here to the gaming station. So gaming UI uh, might be a little bit crazy for you when you first start off. I'm going to have a couple things on my screen that you may or may not have, such as, you know, the gold up here. Um, and I'm just going to spam my sprinkler because there's something I want to show you. Hopefully I can get a cactus. All right, didn't get lucky. So I'm going to jump into the logbook here, here real quick. So all the we'll call them plants in the gaming section have the ability to mutate into a higher version of itself and the thing that is special about the cactus is the cactus you know possibly can force that mutation so you can get it to its fourth and i believe fourth is the final form so using the logbook and discovering more plant species actually gives you a bonus to how much gaming uh, experience or gaming bits that you receive now the important thing is if you hit harvest all if i had a cactus on there it's not guaranteed that the cactus is going to proc first which means you're going to lose all that extra experience that you would have gotten if you would have let the cactus go off first so while the harvest all tool function is is nice i would personally not recommend it just because cactus does not have priority and you could lose out on a lot of experience now this thing i have right here the shovel you can unlock that over in the imports um two things that i think are are quite easy to unlock before things start to get you know a little bit ridiculously expensive seven trillion you know two billion is the shovel which is going to unlock a nugget and the nugget is a multiplier for your gaming experience and then the little sprinkler which is going to instantly grow sprouts when activated recharges over time this is going to be a watered down version of what you can buy in the gym shop so if you go into world five you're going to see it over here the golden sprinkler right so while you can unlock the regular sprinkler through using your gaming bits uh, the golden sprinkler uh, it's actually going to give a 30% chance to not use up its charges with each additional purchase, boosting this chance by 1.5%. And since we're here, I'm just going to go over everything. The Golden Sprinkler, I maxed out. I think it's actually phenomenal. Um, as you just saw, I was on one, one water, and I believe I got an extra four or five out of that. So when that thing is maxed, and you're talking about having a 30% chance of not using up any charges, I think I'm at 15 I have to go in there. Yeah, I'm at uh, 15. So I can, you know, store 15 plants because I've leveled up my garden to level 6. Um, so 
I, I think that's actually a pretty good, you know, bang for your buck. If you're thinking about buying anything, I would actually, I'd recommend, I'd recommend that. Then let's go into the chest sluggo. Increases the maximum number of chests your sailing loot pile can hold by plus one. It may not seem like this is very good. Um, and we're, we'll get to sailing here in just a second. But when you start to get the speed, when you start to get a lot of chests, this is actually pretty good. Um, just because you're gone for, you know, four hours, your loot pile is full, right? Whereas if you had this, you might be able to AFK for, you know, six hours, seven hours. So I do think this is worth it. But again, if money is tight, I don't recommend buying anything. Um, and then lava sprouts increases the maximum number of sprouts your garden can hold by plus one. And it also adds a small lava sprout to your underground gamer layer, which complements the dankness of the ground walls. So these two, all they are just, you know, modifiers to increase what your end, you know, gain would be, right? So they're just going to add, you know, plus one to the loot pile, plus one to how many plants your garden can hold, more or less. And then last but not least, Divinity Sparky boosts the amount of Divinity points and Divinity XP gained by 25% for all of your players. Also adds a Divinity Sparky that wanders around the Deity Volcanoes pondering its existence. So this one, um, if I had to give you, you know, a tier list, I would say this one, first priority, second priority, third, and then fourth. So just how I would rank those, this is just huge for gaming. This is, you know, blows your divinity gains out of the water. You're going to want more space for your loot because I promise you it's coming, it comes very fast. And then more sprouts for the gaming because although you could kind of balance it by getting a lot more um, XP per plant, if you could have more, obviously that's better. And then this World 5 also introduces three consumables that you can buy a day. So we have the Miracle Chest, which is going to give you one Miracle Chest from a random island. These have a 20% Morse treasure and 30% higher artifact chance, including ancient artifacts. This is really good, comma, pause for effect, for unlocking the first artifact from an island. Because your first artifact chance, depending on your loot, is going to be at least higher than 1%. It should be, right? Because ancients, on the other hand, at a much more reduced rate are usually less than 1% to unlock. So that is about a 30% chance. And if you have three of them, you're thinking, you know, maybe 90% chance cumulatively to unlock a new artifact from a new island. So this one, I would say until you're about where I'm at, which I think I've got 13 artifacts, is really good. Not so much, I don't think, for the ancient artifacts, just because RNG sucks, chances of getting something not too high. Next is going to be Bottled Wind. You can buy four of them a day. That's going to equate to, what is that, six times four, 24 hours of sailing progress. I personally am buying them. I personally am buying them. Um, I get a lot of use out of that just because in six hours, um, I can stock up on a higher tier chest. So I personally buy these. I, I don't see the need for the gaming fertilizer, however. Um, eight hours of gaming progress just right now there's not enough inside the gaming lab as you can see we've unlocked fertilizer we've unlocked mutations we've unlocked the imports there's really nothing left for us to do right now um, speaking of speaking of mutations I kind of skipped over it uh, essentially as you gather a plant I'll, I'll grab one real quick so bop, we got one so every time you harvest a plant, any plant, you're going to get one strain of DNA and that equates to a chance to unlock a new mutant species down here. So that's all that is. So with that being said, the ancient artifact chest, kind of useful, right? Miracle chest, kind of useful. Bottled wind, pretty useful. Gaming fertilizer, nah, I wouldn't, I would uh, skip away from this one if I were you. But uh, that is gaming. So I love Divinity. It was kind of a pain in the butt to unlock the uh, <laughs> the first god. Spent well over 100 points trying to. Gaming, you know, it's it's okay. You know, it's just something in the back of your head that you kind of have to keep track of. Um, nothing special, nothing that blows your mind. But my favorite skill by far is sailing. So we've unlocked 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, 13. So we've unlocked 13 artifacts and we've actually found the ancient version for two. So we're going to run through these real quick. I think, I think they're just phenomenal. So Moa Head, everyone should have unlocked this by now. But essentially you get bonuses from all shrines from any map. You must be in the same map slash world to level them up though. So what that means is as I'm in world five in town, all my guys on divinity, if I have a guy doing anything in world five AFK, it's going to level up my shrines. But if I leave and I go to world one Amarok, I'm still going to get my damage. I'm still going to get my, my loot. I'm still going to get my crystal chance. Great, great artifact. Next up, Manakee Cat. Plus two coins from all monsters per class level of your highest level character, which is going to be my Bubo at level 389. 778% uh, more coins. Huge, huge artifact. And if that's doubled, what is that, like 1,500%, so 1.5k? Huge, love it. The Ruble Cubal, plus one total, 1% 1 total damage for every 10 items found after 500 as shown as the slab. Total bonus plus 67 damage. And as you'll see for most of these, they're all just going to say artifacts main bonus is doubled. So I'll just, you know, skip that just to save some time. But huge. Once you hit 500 plus 1%. So it's kind of like a watered down Looty McShooty for all classes. Great artifact. The Fari Tusk. I don't know how to say that. But 1% uh, artifact find chance per sailing level. So I should be... I should be at least level 18, I want to say, sailing. Yeah, level 18 sailing, so I'm going to get, um, oop, wrong one. 18% artifact chance. Really good uh, for, you know, try and scope this one out, kind of snipe it. That way it's going to help you unlock the rest of your artifacts. <clears throat> then we have the gold relic. It is all 3D printer samples grow by plus 1% per day for 40 days. Resets when taking new samples. Now, this one is unfortunate in the fact that let's say i only change one sample on one character it still resets it for every single person on you know the 3d printer so if you go resample um oak logs on your bubo right but you want to keep everything else the same because you've already got a good streak going it still resets everybody else goes everyone goes back down to that one you know one percent so it is good um, once you get all your samples in place next up we have the genie lamp it is a plus two percent loot value from sailing chest per sailing level at my level 18 that's a 36 percent loot value doubled then we have the silver onk unlocks a new post office crate to spend post office boxes on uh, ancient form, this one's different. 25% chance for plus one box when completing post office orders. So just randomly you might get plus one point. But I cannot stress this enough. The new box, which is the Scurvy's Karate Eat, is huge. Cannot underestimate this enough. So at max level, it's going to give you a 5.33% AFK count for sailing. So you actually saw that a little bit earlier where that popped off. So that gave me two hours worth of sailing time just for checking a character. So all 10 of my characters have this unlocked because that's going to count towards my sailing. Cannot underestimate this enough. It is phenomenal. And then, you know, 150 agility, yeah, whatever. But then max, it's going to give you another plus 15% total damage. Phenomenal chest. All right. And then we were on to the Emerald Relic. So convert treasures into gold bars. Go see Blobby G, the gold, the gold bar Blobulite, on the docks for the info. At Ancient Form, you're going to get 1.3 times more gold bars from converting. This is my man down here. As you can see, I've got 13.8k of whatever this is, a log with some, some uh, moss on it. So what I can do is I can trade 2.75 thousand of those for 13.8k gold bars. So I'm going to do that because I do need gold net right now more than I need that because none of my ships are using that. So hit that a couple times. So I went from that 7K up to 61.9K. So it's it's kind of like a conversion system. This will rotate, you know, randomly. That way it uses other materials. And then now I can use that gold bar to either level up my gods or my ships. Then we got the, the hippo. 
it is 6% total damage per power of 10 construction build rate. Now, mine's gonna be low because, let me go over to construction. I'm not on my, my Squire, but even, even so, I'm still at 700K an hour, which by the way, since we're here, I did finally unlock the entire COG construction board. So finally got these four slots unlocked. I'm an in-game in player now, so feels good, love it. Um, not huge, but you know, every bit counts. So it's another 32%. When uh, Ancient Form is found, that's gonna be doubled. The Arrowhead enables you to manage which chest rarities your captains deliver. Helps to clutter your loot pile. Now, this one is kind of a double-edged sword, um, and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna run on down here. My guys, you know, they just dropped off some loot, which we'll talk about that in a second. So if you look at it, can I open it without actually, okay. So this is an iron chest, right? This would be your second tier. That little wood chest would be the first tier. So when you come in here, you can set over here on the left-hand side, the minimum chest that you want to receive. Now that does not mean that they're going to bring back the tier that you asked for. That means if it is a tier lower than the tier you asked for, they will come back with possibly nothing. So that is the double-edged sword portion of this. So I can set it up to my tier two, which means my captains won't bring back anything but, you know, a tier two chest or above. But that means you do not get that tier one chest if that's how it rolls. And it goes up from tier two to tier three to tier four to tier five. So if you set that minimum chest to tier five and you leave for a week, you might come back with only one chest as opposed to every four hours, you can get 13 chests. So for right now, since you know it's still the first week, um, I'm going to keep it on tier one, possibly tier two, uh, dependingly. So just wanted to throw that out there. So you can tell, right, where the stuff is coming from pretty easily based off of what your artifact chance is. And if you don't know how to do that, you would come here and it shows you all the artifacts you've got and you can even read ones that you don't have to find out what their info is so you can see i just unlocked the snowy south i can either get the frost relic or i can get the chilled yarn you don't have to actually find a relic to see what it does you just have to unlock it through the clouds and you know if you need a tutorial on how to unlock clouds more than happy to do it but this is already becoming a long video so we're going to try and you know just get through it as fast as possible so that would be the Arrowhead, the 1080 tablet, 4% sailing speed for every 10 items found after 500, shown at the slab, which I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, the total bonus, 268% speed. Of course, once it's doubled, that'd be what, 500 something. And then we have the Amberite, the lab bonus, no bubble left behind, effects plus one, uh, one more bubble. And then the ancient form, it's just gonna attack on another bubble, I believe yesterday. I didn't get a good look at it, but I believe I get six bubbles a day now. Um, don't know why that is. I thought it was three, so this should have been four. Even with the ancient, it should have been five. But yeah, yesterday I got six bubbles plus three. So, uh, last one, triag Triagulon. 15% cooking speed per power of 10 turkey owned. And I'm gonna cover all the skills, so the divinity, the gaming, and the sailing. And then I'm gonna show you guys in the next video all the other new things that came in, such as our cooking speed, which went from six trillion to 25 trillion, um, just because of all the new stuff that came out. I just don't wanna clutter this video. I just wanna show you guys World 5. So that is that. Those are my 13 artifacts. I love them. Um, when you guys do start to level up, you can get new captains at each level right so this is one level 15 level 25 and level 35 a different pedestal is going to become active and this just upgrade um sorry not upgrades it ups your chance of getting a better captain and what i mean by that is captains have their own <clears throat> tier rarity so you can see over here at the bottom i have two rare captains and their stats are vastly better than you know a regular guy so red bandana, that's just your normal captain. With a pirate hat on, those are your rare captains. As you can see, mine give 25% boat speed and 75% cloud discover rate. And then my other rare captain, 40% loot value and 30% boat speed. 
and you can kind of tell which boat <laughs> that they're on. This is uh, my my captain right here. You can just see from the speed, right? And then he goes, he hunts down all the clouds for me. So he's opening up, you know, world six. And then this one is my loop boat and then boot, boat speed. And I believe he's on the big boat right here getting us all this. So coming in here, actually I wanna try and do it on this boat if I can, nah, don't have the materials. So I wanna to talk to you guys about your boats. So there is a thing, at a break point if you will when you're leveling up a boat. Now, I don't think I'm gonna have enough gold to be able to show you, but as you can see, 839 to 863. That's kind of a small increase, right? 863 to 888, 89. So these are all small increases. There will be a point, and, and trust me when I say this, I just, I'm sorry I couldn't get it on tape to hit a break point, where when that boat gets to a certain point, let's say it's after 937, it's gonna jump from 937 to 1.23k those are the break points those are what you want to aim for because it's going to be your biggest bang for the buck and there's break points for both loot and for speed so regardless of what material that you're needing to level up your boat you know save it to hit the break point and then kind of focus on the other one and i would recommend speed over loot to start off with just because as you can see oh let me go to my map no matter what island any of my captains are going to, it takes the minimum time. If you don't know what a minimum time is, right now all the islands are set at 120. Lava has teased that you know it's possible to get that down lower, but I got all of my captains for one, two, three, four, five. I got all five of my captains to be able to hit any island and still hit the minimum. So that's what you wanna aim for. You wanna aim for the breakpoints in both loot and then speed. And I think that wraps up sailing. Sailing is by far, if you can't tell how excited I am when I talk about it, not just because of the artifacts, I think it's just a great skill. So love sailing, you know, S tier, gods, A tier, and then gaming, you know, B tier. I wanted to show off my Bubo's damage. We have been making humongous gains and I hope you all are seeing the same gains, that, you know, I saw. Uh, we went from 180, maybe 200 mil, and I think if I threw on like damage cards, like possibly 300 mil, all the way up to 710 mil, and then we did sacrifice just a little damage to get ourselves from 150% crit chance to 201%. So that means every time we hit, we can now mega crit, and I'm I'm stoked. I, I still don't even have full troll, so you know in the upcoming videos you can expect to see us getting just a little bit closer to you know that 1 billion damage mark but your in-state goal should be to be here on your boobo get your money percent chances up because as you can see we're, we're getting nothing but dementia and then all of the the rares are dropping void so absolutely loving world 5 loving this update i hope you guys are loving it as much as i am Sorry if the voice is kind of nasally. It is negative 40 here right now. Uh, so, you know, possibly getting sick, but still loving this update. Hopefully you guys are crushing it as much as I am. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.